Electric scooters are everywhere in cities and mostly used by tourists. But despite the bad rap they get for that, they can actually be very useful for commuting or short trips. Sometimes even more so than bikes. How? Let's find out with the Mi Scooter 1S. The 1S is the successor to Xiaomi's widely popular M365 that also a lot of sharing companies used and it doesn't look too different. There's also a higher end version of this scooter called the 2 Pro that has a little bit more power and range and is about 30% more expensive. I personally think the scooter looks quite nice, even if the many reflectors that are necessary to make it street legal in Europe do make the design a bit less sleek. Like most electric scooters, the batteries are sealed inside the deck with the motor inside the front wheel. This scooter does have pneumatic tires that should technically help to dampen the ride, but because there's no suspension and the wheels are so small, cobblestone streets or bumpy dirt roads are not the best experience. Electric scooters really only feel at home on pavement. There are two independent brakes on the handlebars, one mechanical one for the back wheel and one electronic one for the front wheel that also does recuperation. Both brake well and smoothly, but it's important to note that only the mechanical one on the left can hold the scooter on a hill. The classic pushable accelerator is on the right, whereas the left handle has a bell that doubles as the hook to lock the handle when folding the scooter. Doing that is pretty quick and easy, and the scooter is also light enough to carry it up a stairwell at under 13 kilograms. Despite the ability to fold, the scooter feels very sturdy too. The handle and deck are made from metal, with the fenders being plastic. The kickstand is very handy and does keep the scooter upright well enough. On a hill I wouldn't leave it alone like this though. There is also a display up top to show you your current speed and battery charge, and you can switch modes with the power button below. Pressing it once also turns on the light that could be a bit brighter. What I don't like is that you're forced to register the scooter with the Mi account in the phone app, otherwise it doesn't work. That could be a deal breaker for some. I have to admit that the 20 km an hour factory speed limit really doesn't feel that fast. Most cyclists will overtake you at that speed, no problem. But someone told me that there's an app on the Play Store that allows you to up that to 25 or even 30 km an hour. And that person also told me that that's pretty fun. But of course, I don't know firsthand because modifying your scooter would be illegal. No matter the top speed, acceleration is very quick. Even pretty steep hills that are quite hard to manage on a bike aren't really a problem. At least if you're not too big of a person. What I did notice is that the turning radius is quite large though. That makes tight turns not that easy. It's also not that stable by itself. While on a bike you can ride one-handed pretty easily, I would not attempt that on a scooter. Range obviously depends on how you ride, and for me that is top speed pretty much all the time. With that I would say 20 to 30 kilometers are realistic on the 1S. That doesn't sound like much, but it's fine for a number of last mile rides. Realistically, for everything over 10 minutes, I would look for something else anyway or just take it on the train. And that's really what a scooter excels at. Instead of cycling or driving to the train station and leaving your car or bike behind, you can just fold up the scooter and take it with you. Many cities don't let you take bikes on the train in rush hour and over long distances most train operators even make you pay for taking a bike. A scooter you can fold up however is treated as luggage, so you can just take it anytime and for free. You can ride to the station, take the scooter on the train, and once you're at your stop you can get off and ride the scooter for the last mile instead of having to wait for a bus or walk. That's really where I take the most benefit out of it. And if you're going back and forth by train a lot and are fed up with walking 20 minutes to the station, having to take buses, or worse, driving there, something like this might be worth a look. Of course you can also take it to the grocery store like any normal bike, but that's not really where the benefits lie, even if it's easier than biking. You can just lock the scooter through the rear wheel like you would any bike by the way. For the environment, a bike without a battery is of course still better. But I wouldn't really see it as an alternative for cycling, but rather to driving when combining it with the train. Having something to easily take care of the first and last mile is something that could only make a train commute viable for you in the first place if the distances to the stations would otherwise have you drive. I go back and forth between two bigger cities a lot, and for that this is pretty much perfect. It's fun, convenient, and doesn't have you arrive all sweaty. But it's not for everyone, and regular bikes definitely still have their place. If you're looking for an electric scooter, the 1S is not a bad option. It's very affordable, but still light, quick, and well built. If you enjoyed this video, you know which buttons to press. Don't forget to press that follow button on Twitter, and don't forget your mask when you leave the house. I'm Brian, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.